uh, that what we are were uh, awarded from the state. Uh, I'll go ahead and open that public hearing. Uh, is there any comments or concerns? Yes, sir. Comment about the Bass Lake Trailhead. My problem is, how much money does a bicycle bring in to Stark County? Who sells a inner tube around here? Who sells a bicycle? You're going to take away from where the fishermen, the overflow from the fishermen park at. And I don't, why waste the money at a trailhead there? Finish the trail at least to Ori, you know, instead of wasting the money on a trailhead. Why is the Please get the trail going. That's when we have to cross the river and connect, and we're connected. That's my point on the trailhead. Thank you. I always make a point about that. The purpose of that is not really the trailhead, it's to expand the parking lot for the overflow for the fishermen. And there's one, we're planning on having about 10 to 14 new spots for the. For but the, that's not how it's presented in everything. I know. I understand and that, that was a preliminary drawing done before we, we added those on there. It, Actually, we listened to your complaint and we added those parking spaces in there and took away some of the trailhead spot. And main, the main part of it is, the main purpose is to expand the parking. Okay, and there's... Thank you, Ray. Yep, no problem. Is there anyone else with the... Uh... Question if, if, if possible, I'm sorry, could you identify yourself for the I am Mike Samek. I'm nickname is Smiling Mike at Bass Lake. And you know, I mean, we did get your messages too, and we did discuss well, but them. Reply to me. Well, you know, I don't and, like it. My other okay. question to Stark United is why don't you help at a 501c3? You know, Bass Lake Lions Club, our building's 100 years old this year. I cannot apply for a grant from the Lions Club because it's not my building. It's a township, community, county building. I, can, I can't apply for them. There's grants available. I, I believe you told me one time you saw something come across your desk when you were in the other position you were in. No, and same position. Same position. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's right now the building needs to get tuck pointed. If we're going to save a hundred year, year old schoolhouse, Jerry White from, uh, Indiana Landmarks commented on us when I had them there at our building. We are one of the few one-room schoolhouses that still have our outside privies, which are the old outhouses out there. We should be proud of this. Are you on the I'm national? The Lions, but I'm no, I know the that. I, right are now. you? Are you on? Is your building on the National Historic Register? How, is it on? How, I don't know. Okay. I can't find any information. See, it's not my building. It's North Bend Township. Environment don't help me out out there. So I don't know how to apply for grants. That's why I'm here for that part of one thing. But thank you for letting me speak. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Could you um, uh, state your name? My name's Lena Hayes, and I live near the Lake. And I don't understand why you aren't telling us about the case that you just tonight first before you're asking for comment. How, how, because I honestly just received it on my way here in an email, and I've been trying to go on the website for KLA for the sellers for um, the Sandy Beach one on the Pink Place and Kambari, and there's another website, and none of them had had the plans of the case. And so this is like new to, I assume, everybody else because you've been on the CMR page of the Facebook, which is only supposed to be used by people. The, there was a letter posted that one of the residents got that was posted, so then it started getting comments, but nobody has this information that was commenting. Nobody, and so I called the president and I left the message. I also texted the president of KLA because I got that off the newsletter. And still got nothing until today. Mary was kind enough because I finally got to the right person that had a copy of it and she was able to get it to me right prior to the meeting. So are you going to vote on anything tonight to return to Pink Lake? No, no. And maybe I can um, offer a little explanation and maybe we can have somebody from the stellar committee speak a little more to that. 
I don't know who else is from Coos Lake. I've seen I'm most of you are from Coos Lake. I recognize I'm most of you. Who's from Coos Lake? Well, I think you that probably partially true. This is what I understand happened with the Stellar Committee. The first of all, first of all, the commissioners are do not comprise the Stellar Committee. We have several members here tonight um, that that we have given authority to um, to apply for this. Uh, the Stellar Communities and uh, they were a runner up last year, so they were awarded three hundred and thirty three thousand dollars to apply towards their community. I did all my research on all of that, but it's not kind of funny. Well, that's because it, it was just been very recent thing. Okay. Apparently their first choice and they went through the entire vetting process, which takes a long time, really, um, and a lot of steps to go through, was to put um, uh, restroom facilities down by the park where the ball diamond is, where the lions have their uh, a meeting room, and the, I think it's the uh, uh, sewer district has their meeting there as well. Well, apparently at the 11th hour, at the very last minute, there was some misunderstanding. So the uh, the Lions did not want to be responsible for the building, and all of a sudden it fell apart. So the first thought was, um, well, you know, we can't at this late game stage of the game, we are just going to have to use that money somewhere else. Well, I got some phone calls from some of the folks at, at uh, Coons Lake, ENG was one, um, and Rita was another one. And you know, you, fo they, you folks wanted a project. And as your representative, I come up there every year to your meetings. I mean, you, you know, it, I can see why you want a project. You know, you've got so much to offer there. And if you had something nice to, you know, that would enhance your community. But this particular one just was not going to happen at the very last second. So I contacted some of the other folks and, uh, on the committee. I called it was at night when I heard, and I called Marty Lucas, who is on the board, and I called Rick Ritzler at home. I said, What's going on? These people have been so excited about getting this project. You cannot let them just be out in the cold and not have anything. So they uh, said, well, you know, we, we have certain time limits and we don't know if we can meet those time limits and we have to have a public hearing. We have to, you know, do a multitude of things. That's well, think of something. So they did come together and they had an alternative project, which was this one that they're talking about tonight. So I think probably in a week or 10 days, they have come together to try to come up with a plan to meet the deadlines something that would benefit your community. They don't want to do a project just to do a project. They want to do a project that would benefit your community and help the greater good rather than just a couple of folks on there. So this is what they came up with. So one second, sir. Um, so I, I say, if they're happy with it, I'm happy with it, but you got to get you know as much public input as possible. So that's one of the reasons for the meeting. Some of this may not have gotten through. Pardon me. It looks like they've had it for a week. No, no, no. We, we I haven't will, even had it a week. No, no. I'm, 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 I will let I will let them explain. We when seller came first came to us, they asked us for a wish list. Things that we might like to see. This was yeah, well, I, over I a year and a half ago. And, 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 and that was on that was on the wish list. We had it posted for our yearly meeting last, not this year, but last year. We did we, okay. the, the pavilion and everything. We did post it on Facebook at that time, so that was over a year ago. If there are better ways for us to get the word out there, we'd love to hear it. We, um, but the, the Which of the Facebook pages was it on? I searched them. Um, I both, if it over a year ago, I believe it was on the. the I was told it was two weeks old. That drawing. No, no. The drawing. All I was looking for, I was told it was two weeks old. If, if, if the plan is two weeks old. To, that's to make it part of this. Weeks, that's why it's all of us. That's why we send out the letters to notify you. The day you receive the letter, everything. Yeah, we didn't have that when we sent out the letter. 
The letter went out. out there with the crew talking to him, and I asked you about what was going on. He was very good to me. No, I was he not. You was none of my business. No, I did no, not. I was there. Did no, not he was it. right there. You 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 requested. Uh, you requested a pier put in for extra boats, and I said, "Sir, not a pier, a boat race." And I okay. said, "That's not, that's not why we're down here." Is what I said to you. I, did, I was not rude. I didn't have a whistle. Whatever. Down there? We didn't. I mean, I'm just saying this is something that those people on the Facebook have been asking for this, and it existed, but nobody could see it. We saw it. We saw it a year ago when they had still a committee meeting. Yes, stuff we voted on at that time. They said yeah. this only existed for two weeks. Sir. Did you no. say which place? I went to all of them. The oh, no. the, oh. I was wondering which one you put it in. Yeah. It's been it's for about two weeks. It's been proposed to go all the way. Well, you have it now. So, 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 okay. So yeah, now I you have it. So, I will tell you, there's a limited time frame on this. Okay. Uh, we're probably not going to vote on anything tonight. We're the conduit to hold the public meeting. The best conduit under this quick circumstances to hold the public meeting. So we're probably going to refer the comments back to the seller committee who is going to meet like within the next day or two and they're going to vote either yes or no. Okay. And if there's a lot of disagreement from the public over having it, then they probably won't do it, which means you won't get anything up in the Sure. Okay, because I think that before they build the pavilion, they should consider putting up lighting and make the pavilion a secondary item. There is no lighting for safety down there at all, and then things are happening. And if you add the truck dark pavilion, more things are going to happen. I think that's part of the process. But you have to do it first. We don't think it's in here. I bet it. I thought maybe I didn't know it because yeah, I haven't had to build the building first, so you have to well, well, there's there's first. Rick, Rick, Rick said there's lighting, but mm -hmm. it's lighting. And and we have talked to a number of people, especially people at right at the beach. One of the suggestions was not to have grills. Correct. Um, and the other is that. our original one we were first talking about this, we were talking about a twenty by twelve. I can't that, understand you. Originally when we were talking about this and we were down to beach measuring stuff, we were talking about a twenty by twelve. This plan is a twenty by twenty four, which I also think is a little big. Going to cover one of the gated gates for one of the neighbors. Are you um, allowed to do that? That's our access. So instead of the 20 by 24, what I was going to ask Rick and the rest of the committee is if we can go back to the 20 by 12 and just put two tables instead of four uh, to, so we don't have quite the footprint. And but then it won't be in the way of any gates or anything like that. Except for when you have boats to put in your yard, it's too hard. So we had to move our mailbox for our other across the street neighbor because our mailbox prevented him from maneuvering the boat into the lake. So, do you have any other suggestions or comments that you'd like to make? I, I want to see the light first, the big okay. light, mm -hmm. who would make the whole place mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. before you ever dream of putting a building there. And, um, but I think a boat ramp in Stark County would be helpful. We had a boat that we tried to get in in Stark County, but the the, the, um, the wires are too low all the way to get to any of the ramps in Stark County. So we put it in a Marshall County because there are no low hanging wires. And um, unfortunately, Marshall County, like they could bottom out because they need to hold their ramp too. And so our Tia lights are. Suggestions or comments on this particular plan from you. 
Are you done? Are you I done? Or? I think for my main idea. Okay. I, I mean, I had other people that said that they don't, I, I'm not in favor that I'm here, that I can be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, you, if you have them in writing, you can submit those. Okay. What, did you give us your name? I did. Okay. And the yes, sir. concerns sir. that I threw out the drill and the size of it are from people who had concerns about the village. So I am trying to represent. Oh, them. I do have one more then. Because yeah. when I talked to the people, they said they were good to go with your temporary pavilion. They think those are great. Um, like today, he went out with the pants and they're going to separate them at that. And, and they said if you could do that, because the summer that way all year round, there's nothing out there. They said that would be great. And they don't even live on the lake. They will still the walk or two that come there. They said they would use that. That was they, actually that bigger was than the pavilion. I know what it was for, yeah. but there's people who said they would do something like that. They didn't see a need for a permanent structure because they like to park them. That's all. Yeah. Could you state your name, please? Sir? I'm Robert Wayne Hay. I live at. Um, Kramer Beach is in my front yard. I knew that when I moved there. I came here Thursday night after an arduous drive. A little bit of fun with a trailer and stuff. I had a work email to put off, and when I had finished that, it was around 2 o'clock in the morning. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I encountered a couple of young gentlemen between 18 and 23 that decided to go for a swim. So I went and I took a picture of their car under the pavilion. And my phone's about dead, but if you'd like to see it, I want to show you. Sure. The one guy weighed about about 25. The other guy told me he weighed 210. They proceeded to threaten to kick my ass. They called me the N-word. Then they called me a retard. And then they start talking about my age. Now. I requested that they refer to me as special needs because that's what we prefer to be called. <clears throat> but having been in the Army and having been a peace officer, you can barely see it. My phone is really dying. But, but, but these kids weren't even bad. I mean, this it looks to me like he's going to get. And I'll charge you something, show it to you some other time since you're on the Stellar Committee. I, we're not on the Stellar no. Oh, okay. But anyways, that was at 2 in the morning. And I'm normally not up at 2 in the morning. I had extenuating circumstances of why I was up at 2 in the morning. But, the, but since we've been there, more than once I've seen people come down there and um, try to sell drugs. Now, so far, um, I've handed out a couple of Bibles on the Gideon and had conversations where um, one of them swore he was going to go to start up AA at the end of the month because it was drunk. And he wanted to quit. And I said he didn't really have to wait to the end of the month. But I've also seen an occasion where a young man came down there, park, did the Minister of Selling Walks, put on three different shirts, never went swimming, nothing like that. This is probably a meth addict. Probably got lost from the park. Presently, Joe is sleeping down there. And uh, I felt sorry for him, told him he could sleep on my pontoon. Two nights in a row, three o'clock in the morning, there's been a ruckus down there. Last night, somebody was on my boat. Joe happened to use the facilities at the time somebody decided to enter my boat. When he came out of the facilities, they ran off. I'm going to take a nap at the, on my boat tonight. It's probably going to take over an hour for the police to get there. I'm no longer a policeman. I don't pretend to be a policeman. But I don't appreciate that. My mother is 80 years old. You put a pavilion up there, and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get meth addicts. How would you like me to choke one out and drop one in your yard? That's what's going to happen when you put a pavilion down there. Because when it rained, Joe didn't sleep there. He had to find a ride up or go to the park under the pavilion that's well lit. And the idea of putting girls up by a beach is just stupid. Sand blows, you're going to get it in your food. You put the, you put the park bench there to eat, sand blows, it's going to get in your food. Put it in a grassy area. 
off of 23 there, which isn't Stark County, there's a grassy area. That'd be a nice farmer's market. That'd be a good place to put a pavilion. <clears throat> but there's there's stuff going on down there. You put a pavilion there is going to encounter more of it. Why can't you put balconies down there? Because the LA there isn't that much room down there. I mean, we're trying to put 10 pounds of bass and 4 pounds of shorts. It's just too small. You're better off to keep the beach there and to put a pavilion and um, your, your grill somewhere else. Do another park is what we're saying. Well, there's, there's a grass laneway, and that grass laneway would be a nice place to put a boat wrap. A lot of people like to go yeah. put their yeah. stuff yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. When you're talking to cement for this stuff, that'd be a good thing. Well, there's a fire lane. There's a fire lane. There'll be no more beach. Yeah. There's yeah. A fire lane, there'll be oh, no more beach if you put a boat ramp. Well, then we'll go down to the grass um, lane and do it. The, one of my comments that I got was that if you put the pavilions of fire, people won't be able to but get to the But a pavilion is going to attract so more of that. If anything, so put a pavilion up by the fire station. Have them around responsible people like volunteer firemen. If you're going to build a pavilion, don't hire somebody. Get the local hoodlum to work with a cop <laughs> and a fireman and see what people should be. And you'll make good, you'll make, if the Pope builds it, the Pope won't tear it down. Yeah. But I'm going to get to look at the F word is what I'm going to get. Oh, yeah. You would like me to come by and write the F word on a sign and put it outside your house? I don't think so, but that's what you're doing. Well, I, I, okay. Any is we'll move on. We got your point. So, any is there any yeah. other? Really the Thanks. But somebody said that it helps prevent the emergency vehicles from get down to the beach too. If you know that the lanes are binding. Yes, sir. Uh, my name's Don Cameron. Uh, the first thing is the use of the word fire lanes. Uh, they're not. None of those are officially fire lanes. The county owns 20 uh, 30 foot runs that go into Coons Lake on, on the Star County side. Uh, the fire department will not take a truck or a vehicle down there because if they back went in and filled the water, it weighs about 8,000 pounds more than when they drove it in, and more than likely it gets stuck. They have special handheld equipment that they down there to fill up their trucks. So fire lane is not uh, the true description of those properties. Anymore. Even though that's paved? So well, well, the paved ones they might use. But, but, the, but the rest, well, there's 20, 20 of those. Um, but, but, the, but the beach is there where the emergency people might need to be. Well, they can still back down there and, 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 and they, even them. with a the pavilion, they can still back down there and put their holes in. No, no, I'm talking about the health that you need. So if there are 20 of those, they don't have sandy beaches next to them, right? So if you put a grill up, you wouldn't get sand in your food? Uh, there's been grills on beaches, I think, for all of my life. I don't know yeah. that's any different than anywhere else. So for those of us who grill, we don't do that. Okay, well, that's good for you. I've, I've eaten sand before. It's not bad. Um, <laughs> And, and the counter, of the course, anywhere that you put a public space, uh, you could have you could have trouble, and you could have also a, a good location for people to use. So it's a cross between we we can never guarantee anything's going to be perfect. So uh, you guys go ahead and build, build a pavilion. Uh, you might have to spend a little more time with the county coming out on Saturday nights and. Checking it, or if you live next to one and you see any trouble, uh, you get on the phone and they show up. So last night, you know, last night somebody posted a message out to the end. He said, "Here's the key, sir. You have to break in here. Break right there on the way because somebody broke in, but he was they said it was an RV. They didn't expect him in there. So when he's literally he's pushing up immediately so that they would he could be identified now." What the purpose of giving him the way he did? He broke his fingers and he made his black eyes so that he could be identified. So somebody could identify him. And uh, 
His tooth is knocked out, so Mike Bennett's nickname is the aggressive tooth. I read bear. that on your on your sandbar. Yeah, it was on the sandbar, but that's the truth story. It's not we know the person because we told us he did it too. I mean we we asked him what happened and yeah, and if you don't put a light first, you're just Okay. Kathy. Can I can I Yes ma'am? Um, I'm, my name is Cindy McKenna, and my family has been on the lake for 72 years. And we started out um, with a canoe and the old lake farm property. But the best memory of our childhood growing up was the beach. We had um, grass and diving boards and so much fun. And you know what? Back then, we still had problems. It was marijuana and it was. It was sex or whatever. Okay. We still had problems, but to actually build pavilions and enhance and landscape and put partridge or equipment in is going to be, we're going to always have problems, but it's going to be so much more useful for families and, and to, to make our community better. We have to move on. We can't stand in the state and the stone age. Because we have to face problems, they're not going to go away. But this will make a better place for people to use and appreciate. So my feeling is, let's go for it. Because same people are going to be around. We just have to deal with it, but make it better. Sure, they'll put lights up. Let them do the project that they they've set up to be. Whether lights are first or last, it's still going to be good. We don't have lights now, but wait, take that lights until things are up. The lights were on the five-year plan. They were already one of the plans, and they're getting they're going to the wayside. They were on the five-year Clark County plan. Anyway, okay. I um I hope that we get our pavilion, and I hope we get the grills. People around grills are on all beaches. We're in the sand. It's part of life. So that's my statement. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Karen Johnson, and um, if anybody was at the annual KLA meeting, we had um, Officer Doolin, Sheriff Doolin there. Uh, we addressed the gentleman that was in the beach. We addressed what was going on, and and he told us, it's all you have to do is call, and they will come out. They're very aware of what's happening at the beach right now. I'm not seeing that way. I'm saying you know, like, it, 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 it was part of your five year plan. You, it, it, it was like now you're bypassing that. And it was well, we're taking comments today. Okay. So, I mean, right. you've said that several times, right. and I get it that you want lights there. So, and. Well, if you think about it. Start counting by your plan. Right. Okay. You know what I'm about? Yes, I do know what you're there, talking there about. There were other items, mm -hmm. and it wasn't at the very end. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't expensive to do more than anything. Is there anyone else? Yes, uh, yeah. How is there going to be a dressy site? Because I have a huge thing I want to bring up. I mean, can I address it after this is brought up? Yes, at the end of the meeting, yeah, we do take public end, comment. Yeah. I'm, not sure I it be, I'm sorry, is it, is it about uh, the stellar plans? Because there are other projects. This is the oh, no, like one is only one project. There's also projects in North Judson and Knox and, and Bath Lake. Right? I'll save my comments. Okay, no, I just wanted to be clear that it, yeah. it is just about Coons Lake. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Well, can I get a question? I'm Roger. Yes. I live 10 houses down from the beach area, okay? We've had Joey live alongside of us for umpteen years, okay? And he is a drunk and he does have problems, no, okay? And we don't appreciate him. But no. we do report him to police and he is taken away. We do the same thing at the beach area. If we see somebody that's at the beach, it's not supposed to be there, report it. Okay, I live there. There was people that broke into three houses right alongside of me, destroyed three houses, right? Mm -hmm. We lived through it, they prosecuted them, the kids are gone, okay? It's not an immediate thing that happens, but you have to report it. So. And I, I'm for the, the for the podium for the beach area development. Is there anyone else? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I do that since like six or seven years. I learned to swim with Red Cross at that 
Ms. Graham, could you state your name for the record? I'm sorry to interrupt, but we want to keep a record. Who said the statement? Could you state your name? Your name. Your name. Your name. Your name. Your name. Your name. Thank you. And for a lot of years, it wasn't me. And I had been going down there. About three or four years ago, we started going down with my kids. My we were there Saturday afternoon, and I watched the family step coming, the kids, women in there, having a great time. And I thought, this is great. It's a small area, but it was still fun. Those were kids that probably don't have the opportunity to go other places. So I'm truly for it. The people that live there, when they bought, they knew that was a public beach that comes with problems. Or not. So I, I'm for it. Is there anyone else? Can I read the I'm not saying it wasn't a beautiful thing they did for the Fourth of July. I, over, I wrote that I thought it was beautiful. But my point is, the part of what was going on is there was room for people to watch everything, the band that we put in the pavilion created. The plan we've got here is not what they've got doing. They're getting us up themselves off from that. That's, it was, I've got, I've got video of what happened on Saturday. That was great. And I, I talked to people and they liked things that were the people walking to the set, the good place for the tent or whatever. And it doesn't have to have an to take that down. They'd be happy with that. Thank you. Uh, if there's no one else, I'll close the public comment, the public hearing. Um, I guess uh, we're gonna, this is for that, right, Marty? Right, that's for, yeah. uh, for Kirksey and that. I think you've already approved those actions. This is backing up for Kirksey. I just have to sign. Yeah, right. you just have to sign those. Okay. And if anyone would like a sketch of the Peach Lake project or any of the others, these are preliminary sketches. This is not how it's going to work, but if you would like a visual of what it's going to look like, we do have those up here for us. Another quick question. Where will the updates be posted? If you follow Constellation of Stark on Facebook, Constellation of Star. That is the uh, seller group, and we and we'll be posting information there. Yes, and you can also, if you have any additional written comments, send them to Constellation of Star at gmail.com. One thing I'd like to explain about this, Marty, because I'm on the I am on the committee, been on throughout. One thing I'd like to explain about the drawings, and, and Rick, you can correct me if I'm wrong about this, but one thing to understand is we're at the stage now where we're presenting the final. I want to say two things actually. One thing, this 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 project isn't just this is just one piece. The Queen's Lake one is just one piece, and the idea of the project is to enhance some of the nicest things that we have in the county for more public access. And it, so, it, you know, and, and really the, the state, OCRA's rules kind of suggested that we just have one project that would have the most impact. And as a committee, we all decided that what would have the most impact would be to try to have things happen close to everybody's homes throughout the county, not just to do it one place. A lot of times, I know we, we had lots of interaction with Coons Lake people over this period. And, and uh, uh, it was really an, an important part of our concept that particularly the two lake communities, Coons Lake and Bass Lake, would, uh, which are unincorporated communities, would get a significant improvement. You know, if we did get the stellar bid, well, we didn't win, but we were runners up. So we, we tried to pick things out of that that we could, and we tried to make them distributed throughout the county. So that's how this happened. And, and what you're looking at here aren't the final plans. What actually happens is we submit these. Uh, these are conceptual plans that are used to calculate the cost of these projects. But part of the cost of the projects would actually be doing the final design with, uh, you know, with professional design. And it, this is done by a professional, but not as the final design, but as a conceptual design. And so if these are approved by OCRA and if, you know, and if the Constellation Circuit decides to go ahead uh, with this, 
then there'll be an additional step where there'll be actual designs that will be out and we'll get public comment on those as well. There's always public comment throughout the program. And we're, we, we apologize to you for this last minute change. That, that was not what we wanted either, you know, but we didn't, our, the choice that we had, we would be maybe not having anything from Slake and we really, that was a priority for us to include Bass Lake and Coons Lake as areas that we would put some investment in. Can I make a comment a little bit, of, like with the Lions Club out there in Coons Lake? Because I'm with Bass Lake, and the part of it is the cost of the club that it takes for the club to maintain stuff. Mm -hmm. Our our big cost for our club itself is that old schoolhouse, you know. So I understand why the, the, the Lions Club out there has said no, because it's a drain on your on a club. How many fundraisers can you do to 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 support something? I'm fortunate enough, I get enough people at the lake to help support our club. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to get more, but hey, hey, I'll be doing Chicago style hot dogs out there on the 25th. <laughs> <laughs> it's drive through if everyone's interested. Yes, Thank sir. You again. So not only are the plans conceptual, but the theory, the, the idea behind the project is conceptual. And the concept is that we we offer something for the community where young families can come out and enjoy a day with their kids. Will there be problems? Yes, there will, whether there's a pavilion or there's not. But if we have a nice facility for the community to enjoy, uh, I think it's a benefit to the community overall. Uh, member of the uh, Thank you. And I have to say, with the seller being on Facebook, my daughter has spent, I don't know how many hours um, promoting this and keeping and involved in the grant work in Chicago. And I share all her messages. So if anyone lives here and is on Facebook or the Sandbar site, you would know what's going on because uh, it's out there. Continuously, usually day after day, right? Anyone that lives on the lake knows. So. I, I, and I don't dispute that. I just know the plan wasn't because I've been doing that. Look at it before it happens, but I can tell them updates if you check Sandler. I do. I do. I'm a member of it. And I, I, I'm the one that puts the event next to Sandler. And he just stands behind me and it's nice to have her all. She's done so much. I, I appreciate it. And I wish you yeah. more to it. Good. I don't think we wrong. I'm all for the I just want to be done. I don't want to be thrown at it. I want to be done right and firm at it. That's all. Um, I'm the commissioner for the district in Coops Lake. And um, I don't know. I don't get a vote. But I'm encouraging the seller committee to continue forward with this and, and uh, give these folks something nice that they can be proud of and have their families come to enjoy. Um, and um, I appreciate that most of you realize there'll be some issues and problems. We're going to address it as it comes up. And uh, But let's not back down um, from a nice thing that could come help your community. But also be cognizant of some of the co concerns. Um, and maybe they can be addressed, maybe they can't. Um, there's hoodlums everywhere, so. You're right. So that's that's just uh, my thought on it. Um, and I will tell you all too, um, I'll be, uh, this is my last year as commissioner, and I think I mentioned it at, at the uh, annual meeting. I am gonna take a spot on the park board next year, I think, I'm, sh I'm fairly certain I'll have that spot and um, I'll, be working. I'll remember you guys, and I'll uh, certainly try to make sure that whatever the park board does, that we can help in your community as much as possible. And maybe at Bass Lake, maybe um, the situation will be different. Yeah. Turn me into it so I can. Well, I I remember forwarding the grant information to one of your members um, because since it was a township building, only the county didn't have any right. jurisdiction. It, it, so. Uh, so, um, but, you know, that's a good point that it's a one room schoolhouse, one of the two left in Indiana, and maybe there's something that can happen going forward. 
I can't promise anything. I know, I, but uh, for all I can ask is see what you can find for me. I don't know. Is there a president or? No, really. It's it's a committee that operates by uh, you know by the board. Uh, there isn't anybody in charge of it. Okay, uh, now, but the good, here the good Mary, here, Mary Parent is our. She's not on the board. She's our communications director, though. And if you want to send a communication to or from the, you know uh, to the organization, she's probably the best contact person. She'll make sure it gets to who it needs to be. Right. Anything and. I will add. I will add your email as well to my seller distribution list to make sure anything that seller does. From the seller, raise their hand so the folks here know who's on that committee. They are all volunteers, and they put a lot of hours in. I'd like to apologize. I've been a little boisterous on the internet. I apologize. Can I make one comment? Oh, hey, so I know that you're very close, but um, just so people are aware, like this is a continuous process. Like we started with Stellar, which is just like a grant program offered through OPRA, but now it's a regional development team. We really do want to get input from every community in Stark County. So this project is just the $333,000 that we have right now for being a part of Stellar, but this is an ongoing thing. This doesn't stop after this hearing, this doesn't stop after this week, this is long term. So, you know, if it turns out that we need to make some adjustments and in this this specific grant, certain things have to be changed, then okay. But, you know, we're just going to continue to get everybody's input and do what we can to hear from people. So I just want people to understand that, that this isn't just like one and done. So, thank you. Thanks, Jack. Um, I guess we're going to move on with our agenda. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah, he did. He did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, before they left. Yeah. 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 So things have worked out better at the line. Well, normally we take public comment at the end because we have a structured agenda. But, and Charlie's the president. I just have a uh, so, so it's up to him. It sure is. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. You, you had a question for Kathy then? Or you to... You want to address the board, I think. Right? Okay. You want to address the board? Yes, I have a question. Um, I live on uh, Cherry Creek. Mm -hmm. And there is a problem with, you know, there's a condemned house, 7966 mm -hmm. Cross Street. That was condemned in. 2016. Is that the one where the hog was? More than one hog. Okay. Um, Officer Dolan went back there and he said there's multiple hogs back there. And that's just behind the funeral home and just on the other side of the church. And he said not only that, there's a lot of cameras situated all over the woods. Plus he said they're burying lots of stuff back there. And he said that I got the code van. I think his name was Terry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he went out there and he, he verified this whole story. How can these people be living in an area, in a house that's supposed to be condemned uh, three years ago? Well, years ago? first of all, as crazy as this whole thing sounds, especially when they're in a condemned house and especially when they're in a tight neighborhood. We were at the KLA meeting. I could smell it when I showed up to the yeah. KLA meeting. Uh, they have a very distinctive smell. And the hogs are gone. They did go up there, I think, last week uh, 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 and con confiscate the hogs. But regardless, they still have rights. That's what uh, our legal system is predicated on. And I suppose the lawyer could probably talk about that far more than I could. So we have to give them notice. We just can't go in there like the Nazis and gut them down and kick them oh, out. Well, we, I want to see what was being done. Thank you. The hogs are gone. 
um, they have been served notice and I believe Bill told me, Brian sits on our plan commission and the plan commission uh, oversees the unsafe buildings. And so Brian and uh, several of the other members, in fact, I brought one of them with me to the KLA meeting, um, their annual meeting, uh, discussed you know, what, what happened and how, to, how best to uh, approach it. So it is in the works and there will be a public hearing on that. And I believe it's at their next meeting, which is, when is your next meeting? We, we have that uh, second, second Monday. Second Monday of the month. Monday. What time? Um, uh, uh, 5.30. 5.30. If you give me your e name and email address, if you've sure. got it, I'll verify that that is on the agenda. And, uh, uh, and uh, or your telephone number or something, and I'll eat, I'll verify that it is going to be on the agenda and that they are going to discuss it, and uh, so you can attend that meeting. I just appreciate that update. Thank you so much for pushing on and that you guys are following through with something. Well, in my 12 years as a commissioner, I've had some really strange things, but <laughs> hogs in the backyard has not been one of them. This this was a first. When they called me, I said, "Oh, oh, no, sure." <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah. So, oh yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah, so, so yes, and there's been some challenges up there in Coons Lake, I will say. So, so I will uh, verify that agenda on that particular property and email you or call you, Thank you so much. Uh, sometime tomorrow or the next day. Okay, thank you. Uh, Is that all you wanted? Yes, yes, thanks okay. so much. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, Travis and Mary Lynn. Hello. Hi. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, here. Yeah, Jonathan O'Hara, $689.75. Okay, so this is our you know, monthly report. I just see the runs were down a little bit, but every I think um, what we found <clears throat> is our run volume is down a little bit because people just are going to the hospital. So, I mean, I don't think if you talk to people and I had somebody at the hospital, their volume is down also. I mean, if people just aren't going or weren't going for those. Couple months, so I mean, it's not it's not bad. I mean, we're still at 200 runs, and you can still see the percentage of the hospital transfers. Okay, the hospital transfers are 30 percent. Are your uh, runs and transfers back where they normally are for this time of year? Not not quite. Okay. Not quite. Like I said, I think the, this past weekend it picked up. Yeah, the la yeah I did. I just filled like 25 too many from the. I mean, yes, they were. So, but um. So there's um, just the current agency more more came in than I feel. So the um, the top part is always is just that running report, so you guys can see that, and you can see that the the amount of money coming in. But the insurance companies are slower. That that is true. I, I've noticed the processing. So I don't know if I would definitely, you know, be like, oh my gosh, we were twenty-seven thousand dollars down from last mm -hmm. year this time, but it's a whole different world right now. Like I said, they just even as you heard on the news, you know, people calling, calling us to the to pick them up, and you know, so so we'll see. Well, I think as it as the next couple months, and hopefully things open up a little bit more, as it should be. And then on the last page, I would give you the running total as we're getting rid of the old system. These are mostly claims and collections, and as we get paid off from the collection agencies, or we make sure they're in our agency, then we usually take them off our AR just to get rid of them. But they just sit there. But that's from our old system. That's all I have, guys. All right. Any questions there? No. Okay. okay.
so operations wise, our uh, operations continue to run smoothly with four ambulances. Um, the fourth one, 12 hours a day, the three 24 hour trucks throughout the county as we've always had the North Judson, Knox and Grovertown ambulance. Uh, we continue to keep up to date on our policies in regards to COVID-19. Personnel wise, we continue to operate with a full staff with no vacancies. Uh, we've hired no additional part-time help at this time. Uh, we haven't had to since the pandemic started. Um, training, we continue to train our staff daily on the changes, uh, protecting themselves against COVID-19, protecting our patients, all that. Um, we held our monthly audit and review for the first time, not virtually, but we held it uh, in person this month at the hospital with Dr. Maravich. We reviewed chest pain calls, specifically uh, those STEMI calls, um, which are acute heart attacks, basically. Um, we actually got to review some patients that we've um, went on, and we got to see like their angiograms and stuff through as they've opened up certain arteries in the uh, heart, and it's really neat to kind of get an update on those patients as well. So uh, in the coming months, as things become safe, if they become safe, we're going to try to get our crews into the cath lab um, to actually do some kind of hands-on training and watch some of these uh, cath procedures. So we're going to do that with LaPorte Hospital um, and with the help of our EMS coordinator, Dale, Dale Lanham. Um, taught a CPR class for Washington Township Fire Department earlier in the month. Um, that went really well. We're starting to do those with uh, the permission of AHA. They've extended all the guidelines, but um, now we're starting to get into the back to the hands-on. Um, also got a CPR class tomorrow with the Skill Center. Safety-wise, we had an injury-free month. Ambulance maintenance, uh, we had some deaf system issues with two of our ambulances this past month, 0514. Went into reduced power mode and was unable to clean the system on its own, so it was taken to Auto Park GMC in Plymouth. They replaced the EGR sensors that were reducing flow, changed the exhaust temperature sensor, replaced the actual EGR valve and topped it off with coolant. They also replaced the fuel filter and cleaned the DEF system. Uh, 0084, which is our new transfer unit, was also taken to Auto Park for similar repairs. Um, actually, the same DEF system problems with the EGR, things like that. Um, both trucks are now back in service. However, uh, 514, I actually did this uh, before it went out of service, but today had to go back over to Plymouth. Um, the radiator had blown. Um, we didn't know what the issue was, and it just left there, so we weren't sure. If it was something that was caused by that repair or not. Um, so that's back out of service. They're hoping to have it back to us within the next day or two. Um, base maintenance wise, we started to gradually convert our station lights from the standard T8 bulbs to the LEDs. Uh, we converted the uh, emergency lighting in our bases at this time too with the LEDs. Uh, we'll keep a close eye on how much Maryland's been pulling the NIFSCO bills and stuff. We're going to see how much the county can actually save by doing this. Um, grant updates. I still have an outstanding grant for our fourth Lucas device. Uh, for the transfer unit, also a grant out for a new and upgraded uh, ventilator. EMA and I just put in for a foundation grant through the state for protective equipment, um, and I continue to re research further opportunities for the ambulance stretchers. Uh, the other thing I didn't add, but HealthLink update, we're starting to do the mobile response team things again. Um, I know those have been kind of slow as well, and you guys haven't received an update. Those things seem to be going well. People are still having their addiction problems. We're still there to help. So. Uh, kind of getting ramped up with that again. We got a couple this week that are scheduled, so hopefully these people will get some help. Anything else? Sounds good. Thank you. All right. No problem. Come on up, Rick. All right. Been spending a lot of time in the last month or so on the budget, as you know. Um, we're the first ones to get hit this year, really, because of the gas tax revenue. And we're getting hit in May, June, and July. Where our uh, draw was about 13% down in May and about 20% down in June. So there's some good news, though. Overall, for the year, we're just down about, if you look on the chart, about 5.43% on the uh, MVH and 3.8% on the LRS. And the uh, traffic volumes are up to about 96% of what they were pre COVID. So it looks like we have to weather the storm maybe for July and August a little bit, and then the next month should be better. We're looking at an overall decrease in our budget for this year by about 5 to 15% for MDH and ORS. Um, but we, as you'll see in the next chart, we've got that covered. Um, those are our draws for the last couple, uh, since 2016 for MDH and LRS. Um, September, and we have that green box. That's where the gas tax started. If you go down, you go across, you can see how that pretty much stays the same. We're still above pre-gas tax level, even with this decrease. So we're doing pretty good. That way, and I think we're going to compensate for all the uh, revenue loss. 
uh, the next uh, chart is how much we've spent so far this year. This is exactly halfway through the claims uh, number of claims. Um, at the midpoint of the year, uh, we're spending about four, we spent 41% of our budget. We did that on purpose. We shifted, shifted some high cost things towards the end of the year. If we get the money we expect later on, we'll go back to those. As you'll see with our uh, paving operations that we've done, we focused on gravel roads and some of the hot mix things that we already had paid for, and we're pushing some of the other, some other things back. If we get a bigger loss than we expect, we can compensate for that. So if we spend like we did in the first half, that'll be 83%. We'll have 17% that covers that 5 to 15% loss. So we're prepared for that. We may even gain some in our cushion at the end of the year if we do that. However, we also understand that we want to put as much money in the roads as possible. If we do get that money back, we're going to put them in into the roads. We have that already. We're making asphalt. We make cold mix, it makes asphalt last week. We're going to chip seal and, and crack seal this next month. And uh, a Range Road and 250 North mm -hmm. are getting hot mix paving in the next month as well. So I'll show you. I'll get that in a minute. Um, now we, we don't anticipate as much of a loss as the rest of the county general next year, but we do expect some. Uh, so I reduced the in total budget for MVH, Cambridge, LRS by 5.83%. That's $221,000. I think that will cover any losses we have, and I don't think we'll ever have to ask you for any money like we never have in the last seven years. So if we've got that covered, we're anticipating we can go either way. If we get more money than, than we expect, that's great, and we can put it back into the roadways. But we kind of got it covered. Now, uh, roadways. Uh, there's a, and you will be familiar with the board that we use there. Uh, that's all the work that we've done. Everything in red is things we've already started. So about half the things we've already started. I'll go through some of those in a minute. I think I already mentioned we're going to be chip sealing and crack sealing. We're on pace for 85 miles of improvements. We've already done 48.79. Last year we did 90. So even with the revenue loss, we're, we're there. Now we shifted some of the types of things that we do. So we can't do that every year, but we can keep up at least a year or two doing that. Uh, so hopefully revenues go back up and then we can go back to our normal program. But we're still improving a lot of roadways. In fact, the next page is that list of roadways that we've already improved. First thing we did is grade and reshaping. It was more than just grading the roads. We reshaped some of our gravel roads. We're also putting, if you've noticed, some of the gravel roads have grindings on them now. We've been putting those on. We got those from State Road 8 and 35. And people who have complained about dust control, we're putting those on there. They have oil in the grinding. It works really well. And it makes a better road. And those are roads we can chip over later on, too. Well, and I'll get to that in a minute as well. So we've done a lot of those. Uh, it's working really well. The more traffic you get on those, the more they almost end up like uh, pavement. Yeah. So they're really great. Can't get enough of those grindings. We've also, uh, the two projects will be going, that'll be 11.7 miles, 75 miles of hot mix. We may do four or five of our own after that. Um, so we're on pace for last year, despite the revenue loss. And the, the community crossings, we were very fortunate to uh, get our entire limit, the $1 million, because it looks like they may not have a second round. Oh, they're officially, the last week, they're not having a second round. Right. Right. Well, they were officially announced it, but yeah, they, they say they may do something else, but we got the total amount, so that's a good thing. Okay. Yeah, so we're really fortunate to get that. All right, on to bridges. Bridges 137, 7, and 59 are the next three to be replaced. Uh, one next year and two in 2022, so we're really on track with bridges as usual. Um, only those will we'll have none deficient after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, culverts, we've replaced eight this year. Uh, Bob Lorenz, our construction inspector, just finished. His inspection of all 642 of our culverts. I think he added one. And uh, we compiled a list to clean out and replace for the rest of the year. We replaced eight already, and we're working with the surveyor. They're doing some of the big, he's doing some of the bigger projects on the um, legal drains, and we're doing the smaller ones, and we're working together pretty well that way. Um, roadway safety. As you know, we use L uh, Purdue LTAP to do a roadway investigation, so we don't have to pay uh, engineers for that. They're going to do a we're already working on 700 East and 200 North. We've had a lot of complaints about that from the Sheriff's Office and 100 East and 500 South. We had a citizen request a four-way stop. So Purdue's doing that. They do that for free. It's a great service and we take care of that. Um, helps us a lot. Lower Shores Crosswalk. We have completed that. If anybody's been to Bass Lake on the North Side, you'll see the new crosswalk we put in. The thing in the middle, people were concerned that was going to get hit. So was I. We bought two just in case. If one was hit, we're going to put them on both sides. It's slowing down traffic mm -hmm. better than anything. So that has really worked. Mm -hmm. So we're really happy about that. It's been hit a couple times, but it's flexible and it can come back up. I think if it gets destroyed, we'll just keep putting it back up because it has really slowed down people. We have the uh, boxes up now to, to see how much it slowed people down, but I think it's considerable. So that's really a good thing. Uh, next, US 30 Coalition. All right. 
If you look a couple pages back, you'll see the bill that we got for the U.S. 30 Coalition. As you know, we've been a reluctant partner with that in the last few years. Um, they are not billing us the full $12,000 billing. They're going to do 6000 for one voting member. Um, there's pros and cons for that. The project may not be going forward, but it may be going forward in a much smaller version. I do think there is some importance to being on the committee to make sure that we have a voice. Uh, the mayor was here last time from Warsaw, and he pitched the project. Uh, but I also understand it's six thousand dollars, so I see set that side as well. But I do think there's some importance in staying in this coalition. It has helped us negotiate with NDOT a little bit. They're putting in the one uh, um, intersection improvement up in 23 and 30, and us being part of the coalition, that's why they came to us to talk to us about it. So that has helped as well. So I do think it might be something to stay in one more year. There is a line item for it already for ten thousand dollars and seated, five thousand seated. So it's up to you. Um, I see the merits of both sides, but we do kind of have to make a decision on that bill. I'll tell you what my opinion is on that. Have those other people paid their uh, uh, back dues? All of the counties have paid except for Porter and LaPorte, and they have not. They're the richest counties. Let them pay. Let them pay. I don't think we're going to cause the problem. I think Warsaw, Arthur County, and all that is going to cause the problem. We don't right. have that problem. That's right. And they've allowed them to stay on the committee without paying. Yeah, yeah. so uh, tell them to take your bill and keep. I'll be diplomatic yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think they tell them where we could get very graphic about what they could do with that bill. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, well, one more, okay, a couple more things, actually. Fuel tanks. Uh, earlier this year, we had a couple trucks running poorly. Uh, we thought we had gotten some bad fuel. Uh, we had it extensively tested. I had the results back at the very back, I think. We had a test class. Country Mark tested it twice, and another independent com uh, company tested them. The fuel was fine, so we were wondering what it was. We changed the fuel filters in the trucks and at the pump, and that helped, and it made it a little bit better. Now, we just had the pumps, both tanks cleaned uh, this last month, and the people cleaning the tank said that there were some seals in the pump and the poses that were bad in letting, allowing air in the fuel, and that was probably causing some of the problems. Um, so we, that helped. Tanks were cleaned. Um, they did a good job with that. I do want to talk about the um, fuel bidding a little bit. Uh, we have bid month by month as as we need the fuel, and that has saved about eight to ten thousand dollars a year. Now that works fine in the in the summer when the fuel is not there's not much difference in the fuel. And we really haven't seen much difference. We've never really had a problem with that. Where we have had the problem sometimes is in the winter, where some of the other companies don't bring they they meet specs, but they're still not as good as what we we need. Kenny and, and Star County Corp have been re very responsive to us and very helpful. And I do believe in, in our, our drivers and my foreman, we all believe that the fuel in the winter that we get from them is a little bit better. So what I'm asking is I think we should still bid the fuel in the summer the way we do. Sometimes there's an eight or nine, seven or eight cents swing, and that's a lot of money. That's mm -hmm. about six, seven hundred dollars a tanker. But in the winter, I do I would like to have a little more leeway in selecting that if it's not necessarily the lowest bid, maybe three or four cents a gallon. To do that because the fuel is better and he is more responsive. When we had this problem with the tanks, Kenny was right there. The other companies were not. So, and I do think it's important in the winter that all our trucks are running and we don't have a problem with that. We really haven't had much of a problem um, because most of the time we use to go up fuel in the winter. So, is that your recommendation? That would be my recommendation to give a little more leeway in the winter of bidding. Okay. Yeah, I feel like this knows what he needs. Yeah, because Kerry. When Kerry was there, he always said, you know, they had a lot less problems with the, with the diesel trucks, especially in the, in the wintertime. The they, they treated it better. And stuff. It, was, it was ready to go, you know, less freezing up and things. Again, Kenny always responds. He has, quite, he has his specs for us all the time. And sometimes it's difficult to get the specs from the other companies. Mm -hmm. So that would be helpful to us in the winter. And there's a lot of tax dollars that come in from our kind of going off, too. There's a lot of tax dollars. So when you say winter, do you know what month it would be? It would be when we switch to winter blend, which is generally in November, October, November. Well, I, I'll make a motion that we uh, allow Rick to negotiate field prices as he sees fit. Any second? All those in favor? Aye. And the last hmm. thing, I added this for something else, but... Uh, sure. Oh, absolutely. I would just like to... Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to be here. Thank uh, It's been good to work with Rick. Uh, I'm a fill in, but uh, 
I know anytime that he has a problem, he calls us with Johnny on the spot. We always take care of things. And I did a little research with Country Mart. And I don't know if you guys are all familiar or not, but we have our own refinery down at Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. We got a pipeline that pumps up. We pull all of our stuff out of the roof. So there's a lot of times that we can't quite compete with other bids out there. I mean, the last bid was eight cents. And I understand that. But the quality of the fuel is so much different. Even though that it's in with specs and you still be able to do that. But Country Mart has a policy and a guaranteed insurance policy that if you guys were make a commitment to buy from us and you know, we could be our three cents over our rec price and we could show and prove every time we do a bid, just give you that to show you that we're three cents over our rack plus our freight. And we'd have that. And I know that being uh, state, county, energy, that you guys have to take bids. If we threw something out there and had a certain criteria that they had to meet, so we're all comparing apples with apples, you know, then I think everybody would be on an even playing field. But if you guys are buying 100% of your fuel from us with the incident that Rick had, all the aggravation that he had with the fuel problem, if that was all of our fuel going in there, Country Mart would step, step up, set a plate, and if it's our fuel problem, we'll pay to have that tank clean, do whatever, if it's our problem. I know they take the fuel filter back in when everybody was with uh, B5, stuff like that. I know there's several schools, uh, places that had this problem. And I can tell you, I know they wrote a check for over $40,000 back to the Fort Wayne School Corporation when they had some issues. They, I mean, they're just not blowing smoke. They will back everything up to take care of things. And you know, we would make sure that the tank was clean, taking care of whatever issues they had with the trucks, they would take care of that, pick that up, pay for it, and put it on the So, anyways, you guys need to think about that. There's different things there that I give Rick for what you should be looking for with fuel specs. And again, we can go back and we can look. But the government does not have a criteria for quality. They won't make the uh, for MSDS sheet that, that it has to meet that certain criteria like they do gasoline. But we have that there, something that maybe you guys want to look at. What I would like to do in the next year by using what we just voted on now, we see if there's a difference. We'll do summer with mileage and filters and other things, and also there's the winter if we use that three or four cent um, dispensation or whatever it is for him. Um, I think we can you know, over a year study that and see if that really what, what makes a difference. Either if that's the way to go, or maybe we do want to think about in the future going with one. I think we can use that as a kind of an example in this next year to do that. Well, I will say I've been the uh, commissioner for 12 years, um, and Rick has consistently um, demonstrated his knowledge and. Uh, of uh, what he needs to do to run his apartment at its utmost efficiency. So, frankly, I don't personally need to know that stuff. I think, you know, I think my my feeling has been we've got a great guy. He's doing a fabulous job. Why would we micromanage him? Uh, you know, let him just let him alone. Let him do his job, and and things will get done. So that's my opinion. But I'm not going to be here after the end of the year. But I can assure you, I'll probably be watching what every, everything that's going on. So. All right. The last thing, we have a chart of the safety chart here that uh, safe, our crash records. Um, we're about to get our 2019 um, statistics in about a month or so. And that looks like that we're going to go down there. The good news on this, I want you right here, is the trend that we have. This blue line is our trend on this chart that our accidents have gone down over the years. The red line is the average of a rural county. Our overall crash statistics have been getting better every year. They use a 10 year average. If you look those first three years, 29, 09, 10, and 11, we had much higher accidents, and that is weighing down our 10 year average. Once we get past that point, we're really going to swing down 
on the uh, overall statistics for the state. Uh, like if you look where average animal crashes are 80, we just had 58 last year. Intersection crashes are 61 per year. We've been down. Deer strikes are very difficult to manage. As you know, we try to do that. We cut back to brush a little bit. That's one of the higher deer strike counties in, in the state. Uh, we're working hard to improve that, but our overall crash records are going down. That helps a lot. Saves the county a lot of money and the, the safety of the community. And we're, those things we do through Purdue, that's why we do that. That's why we do those studies. That's why we invested in those um, traffic counters and the speed counters, and they are helping. So um, if we continue to do that, I think we'll continue to move forward. Just want you to see that. And when, so when, in a few months, you'll see the 2019 one, see if that trend keeps going down. Right? Any questions? I don't think I see it. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, we have the applications for the gravel roads were due for next year's um, upgrading gravel roads to chip seal. We, was June 1st. We received two applications. We were going to do three miles of roads. We received the applications for 1.65 miles. As long as those ro those applications are fine, I think we're going to go and do those. Yeah. Um, someone submitted an application after the deadline. It was incomplete. Um, they are still trying to complete that. We have not used the full three miles yet. Do we want to do that or do we want to wait and push forward? I don't know. I'm going to review their application when they come in and maybe next month I'll make a recommendation on that. But uh, we already had three picked out for this year that we'd already select, decided and then next year we're going to do the ones that in these applications. So uh, there was 700 south between uh, 875 east and 975 east and the three, three small gravel roads at Bass Lake, um, Pine Street, Hill Street, and Beach Street. So they all applied, they all did what they were supposed to do, so we will probably approve that, but I'll submit all that to you next next month. Okay. All right, thanks, thanks Rick. Rick. Bernadette. I believe um, Mr. Lucas already emailed you with the resolutions for the vote centers, along with the minutes to the meeting that, and, the uh, plan. Um, and the plan, the yeah, the final plan. There, all the records, all at once. No. And I believe this has already been voted on that it's a go just for formalization. Of well, I think the, the, the uh, actual final approval is up for the meeting up today, actually. Okay. They, they approved the, uh, the plan and, and doing it and expressed their interest in it, but now they have to approve the final plan. Okay. Okay. You know, have a, you've all had a chance to review the resolution mm -hmm. right. and the plan and everything. Was there any questions about any of that? I didn't get any back then. The council has already approved to purchase the e poll books for the vote centers. So that's in the making also as well. So is there a motion to approve this vote center for the center plan? I'll, I'll, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you for getting that through that was a challenge, you know, and it was there's a lot of hoops to jump through and you know, so congratulations. Thank you. I think it will be a big improvement to the way we vote here in Star Time. Doing one thing at a time. Next is the non-disclosure agreement with FireEye. Um, I believe IT can explain it a little better. It's the security platform that yeah, it just, it just goes for. over their uh, their platform and pretty much everything in a nutshell. Yeah, we were paying for it, and then the Secretary of State. We were regulated to do it in the clerk's office for the elections, and then she opened it up to the entire county, which by going to FireEye instead of purchasing it through 
Sofo. Sofo. Yeah. Uh, saved. I don't remember the number. Oh, I think we're doing figures. They have been booked for uh, probably 18,000. Yeah. This is the so this is closure agreement. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So it's standard. Should I have a motion on this or is yes. motion? I'll second it. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Any questions about the election for me or the vote center or clerk's office or? I don't have. Yes, I know. I I knew I was seeing you. Too. <laughs> it goes down to the uh, election division to the state. Now, right? Yes, the I know. I have to wait for the the council. Well, that's right. The council has to sign, has to sign their resolutions, and then I can send it so to I'll prepare a similar one. IED. And distribute that to the council then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're. For the vote center plan, it has to be approved by both the council and. The council's already approved it. They just have to sign the resolutions. And they file it. If I could just speak to that, the council did. Yes, we did say that we are in favor of it. We did not make any direction on where the money would come from. The only thing I did say was, I don't want to spend any rainy day funds. That we wanted to try to take a fifteen cap or from our budget. I believe Rachel had committed also to you know, working with us, us, especially you when I say us more you, um, on where to find that. But we are definitely in support of it. I, I don't I don't know if it was exactly that we voted on it and said it gets approved. Because the commissioners would actually um, make the decision. They have the authority to. Would you say it was eighteen thousand for the e poll books? No, the e poll books are paid for by the state, right? No, we have no, to pay for the e poll. And how books. much are those? Again, yeah, I think you did forty dollars for year. Um, forty-four thousand fifty-five dollars, but it can be divided into two non. No interest, interest free, yeah. interest free That's payments. Yes. Forty four thousand for two years. Yes. Twenty two each year. Twenty two each year. Twenty two thousand each year. Yeah, forty four twelve. Well, we have uh, a request for um, more clean cap funds to be appropriated by council. So I'm not sure we can come up with a suggestion at that meeting. I mean, you know. Unless we can find it other places, we just that's our preference right now. Just to, you know, kind of well, we have kind of a limited uh, uh, pool of revenues available to us. We have seeded funds, we have student cap funds for something like this. We don't have any other funds, so. Um, well, I didn't mention the seeded, but I was that's the other one that I was thinking of. I think that you know, looking at student cap so far, I don't see that twenty two thousand or so be a common meeting. Well, those are two pulls. So, um, like I say, I think we requested 130 or 160. I can't remember how much. Maybe we should up that to 150, probably. And, uh, uh, it would be not a huge shift from there, and that would still leave some some money left over for next year. And if we have enough left over at the end of the year, we could probably uh, pay the second installment of the team cap from this year if we don't exhaust it. I was kind of thinking about the leftover money just to pay shortfalls. Those are all options. Mm -hmm. so I was I worried think we should increase that to 150. And do you, uh, I make that motion. Do you second that? All in favor, I. It's already been published for 130 for the next council meeting, but I can add 20,000 for the August council meeting. Gosh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Details, details. I um I expressed earlier in the year I was worried about the budget of uh, the election side, but uh, having to combine for the uh, primary and go into vote centers in the fall, I don't see uh, any issues at all coming in under budget this year for the election budget. So, well, we might have fine. an extra twenty-two thousand from your budget to pay that. I the won't have that much money, but I may have a little. Well, be some of it. I mean, I was looking at the numbers. Just you know, they, uh, that's where some of that's going to come from for sure. That's why I said other places. No, we're not spending money out of county general. If we don't spend for appropriated money, that's going to roll over to next year because we're going to need cash balance. 
Anything else? Oh, nope. Thanks, Bernadette. Thank you, guys. Larry. I'm, I'm here to ask for uh, the support for the uh, skill center. We've gotten every year for several years. And Albert Hanselman's here to, to kind of explain a few things. He's the, uh, he heads up the co-op that we're part of for the, for the high school training. And uh, Don White's part of our, uh, part of our group and he's here to, to speak also. But uh, we feel it's necessary to keep the skill center going. Um, with the economic downturn, it's an important time to focus on workforce training. There's people who they lose jobs that need to be retrained. And the last thing you want to do is, is eliminate your workforce training. And another thing that I, I think is important to consider is if we don't fund it, these programs that, that we have now will go someplace else. You know, Plymouth would be glad to pick up our, our Aaron program. And, and the equipment that we have came through Perkins grants from Albert's agency, and those would go away. That that equipment would go wherever else they would put those or that training. So if we shut it down one year, we shut it down forever, essentially. So we're asking that, uh, that we get, uh, you know, the same support we've had in the past, and, uh, and that's that's what we're asking. And I think you know some of the other communities do similar things to uh, to support their their workforce development efforts. It's not something that just our county does. That's a thing that a lot of communities do. I don't know if Albert can address some of those, but I mean he works around with a lot of different places. But uh, I guess that's what uh, that's what we're here to ask. If you have any questions? You know, Albert, Don, or I would like to address them here. One thing, I, well, a couple of things. Actually. One thing is, I really think our public schools ought to be more involved. I think you're spending about a month of money there to serve. Yeah. Uh, we've pretty much thrown us out of the world in every year. We're building all the schools and all the money. So, going in here, uh, how, how much money do we spend? Twenty something million dollars over here right now? Something uh, like that. We're, you know, you got that. <clears throat> the other thing that you know, maybe you ought to use some of that for grants and things for these kids. You know, when they do get out of it, you know, they're sending the IV back and stuff too after they've been through that, of course. But we're thinking about new, building a new welding school. Then we're building schools like crazy over here. And that's tax dollars. I know it's, it's not tax dollars, it's the uh, commissioners or the council has. Control over it. You know, it, it's through the school corporation, but uh, man, it's a, we're talking about a lot of money here, and a lot of other counties are not doing that. So. Well, and I obviously I'm going to have some comments here, which um, I'm sure everybody to me that I would. Um, the commissioners and the council have been asking for changes for a long time, and nothing ever happens. We've asked repeatedly that the skill center go and find other funding, work with the schools, do something like that, and that never, ever happens. The state is, I, in fact, I just got an email today about the Next Level Jobs Program. They are providing uh, workforce ready grants. They're providing employer training grants. And those are taxpayer supported that Stark County taxpayers are paying for, and they're paying their school taxes which is 50% of my property taxes are for school taxes. And then we're taking some of this money and adding more taxpayer money on top of it. And it's very frustrating when you ask skill to make some changes and all we ever hear is, well, we can't survive without it. Uh, we, um, uh, uh, this is the way we've always done it and nothing ever happens, nothing ever changes. And I did send an email, which I'm sure you saw, um, I'm sure your entire board saw it, that uh, outlined some of the things that, um, you know, I find objectionable with both boards, the Stark County Economic Development Foundation and the Skill Board. And I'd like, we're the customer. 
we're 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 not we don't have a, a, a an obligation to fund what what you're asking us to fund. I don't disagree that that's a bad thing. I don't think that they're doing a bad job necessarily, but we're the only county in this consortium that pays from their seeded funds. I mean, we've already established that. I've asked how much it costs for a student for them to, uh, and I remember when Ron was here before, he gave me some figure. And I said, well, how much are you collecting for each student? It was more than it cost them. I said, well, then you're making a profit. Oh no, we're not making a profit. Well, I mean, what are the numbers? I mean, if he doesn't know what the numbers are, that's a problem. And frankly, I think it's time for Ron Gepper to retire. I, uh, he's a nice guy. He won't live here. Um, you know, there's multiple other issues that, uh, um, that goes with that. Some of your board members, you have the same board members for many, many years. I know Jim Wagner's been on there since the 80s. You don't, you can't change if you keep internalizing the same people and the same habits and, and you cannot keep up with the times. Um, that's my opinion. Now, and then when you do object, you're, it's pretty well, pretty, pretty good character assassination that, that goes out. I mean, uh, there's tremendous pressure to conform to what the Economic Development Foundation and Skills Center want. Um, and I find all those things objectionable. Um, you know that we are going to lose at least at least 15% of our income going forward. But what are you going to do to adjust to that? Uh, have you been to the schools? Have you done any fundraisers? Have you asked employers to participate? Have you seeked out any grants? I don't. I think the answer to all of that is probably no, especially in the last six months. Um, I think you need somebody that uh, is enthused about their job, that is energetic and is willing to, to uh, commit to doing the things that need to be done. Um, if you want to continue, you need to partner with Ivy Tech. That's the school, the state's supported programs. That's part of where all these grants are coming, coming for. And we need new and fresh ideas for how to provide this education, but just giving money every year just isn't cutting the mustard as far as I'm concerned. That's my opinion on it. I think it's a disservice to the taxpayers if we don't press you to look into other avenues and, and other options for getting that money, especially when we're the only ones paying it. Marshall County doesn't pay, Polk County doesn't pay, and St. Joe County doesn't pay. And we're bringing their students over here, and part of our money is going to support students from other counties. It's, it's not right. I'd like to say a few things. One, you know, as far as the, uh, the training programs you talk, talk about, that's for individual workers or for the company. To, it's not, it's not a, a training program where they give a grant to, to a company or a, an entity like Skill. I mean, it's not designed that way. Ivy Tech, uh, we partner with Ivy Tech on, on a lot of things. Um, Albert can uh, relay that information better than I can. But for the Aram program, we, we run their curriculum. And when we're, when we're starting new programs like the, uh, the fire rescue and the EMT program, we talk to the Ivy Tech people and we, uh, we adjust our program. Well, we, we use their, their type of training. We have a, have a long and strong relationship with Ivy Tech. Um, other, other communities do support workforce development. They, no one has an entity just like skill, but they have other types of workforce development. And there, there's many counties and communities yes, that I put saw some, some of those in the public support into that. Mm -hmm. I saw some of those uh, were detailed out from, uh, uh, Dang it, Diane Tellman. Yeah. Must have forgotten them or whatever. What she, what? But I also noticed that all those counties had, uh, they were bigger counties. They had more people. They had more revenues than we do. Yeah. And they, and one of them only gave thirty five thousand. Yeah. Uh, they didn't give just eighty thousand every year just because somebody asked. There were specific requirements established with that, with with those the things that she had uh, ish, laid out there. 
when when skill first came about, it, 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 it was it was started because we did not have an Ivy Tech or anything like that in our community. Our people had to go to other places to, to attend an Ivy Tech. So that's why at that time the county decided they would they would go ahead and support a workforce development training center here in Stark County so our people don't have to travel away. And um, I can't, I mean, I had comments for two or three of your other points, Kathy, but I can't recall exactly what I they were. I, and I understand that it's a stressful thing um, and it's very difficult. And, um, and I mentioned last time it creates hard feelings. This is a small community. I've known you forever, Larry. And I know that my uh, comments create friction between us and, and, uh, um, and I don't like that, but I feel like if I don't voice my objections and my and, and these things, then I'm not doing my job as a county commissioner, and I'm not being true to myself either. If I just go along with the with the crowd uh, on this thing, I would much rather. I have a lot of respect and a lot of regard for you, but I don't feel like we should be subject to this year after year after year. Uh, let now, me here's, ask you, let me ask you this. Is there some level that you would support us? You know, if you want, well, here's if you what I would suggest. I have a very, I do have, because I've thought a lot about this since I shot off the email that I sent off, which I um, I didn't say anything that was not true in that email, but I realized that some of the things I said probably didn't have to be said, and they were pretty um, brutal. But that's my nature, and I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry about that. And I felt bad doing it. I apologized in the in the email for sending it, but I had to do it. And so I've tried to think, because I knew you were coming tonight, and I tried to think how how could we come to, you know, professionally come to some sort of um, understanding uh, that would not leave you high and dry, num number one, um, but yet, push the issue of making some of the changes that the commissioners have been, and the council have been asking for for years really um, to make everybody happy. We are the customer. We're the representative of the taxpayers. I've never had to deal with a company that I, I was the customer in the same manner I've had to deal with the economic development and skill. It has not been a fun thing for me, let me tell you. But I do have some suggestions here. We can do um, a couple of things. One is I know you have CDs um, because you mentioned it at the last meeting. So my suggestion would be dig into your CDs and pay this year's fees. Let's sit down here and talk. We might be able to come up with a grant program for you where for every dollar you are able to get in a non-community setting, we'll match it for a dollar to help you get through this, this thing and help to learn to get more onto your own um, and maybe going forward. Uh, the immediate thing is if you need the money tonight, right now, today, my suggestion is your CDs. But I am willing, and I think my fellow commissioners might be willing. I, I think they want change too. I mean, we haven't discussed this among ourselves. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. Um, so I don't know, maybe they totally disagree with me and maybe they just want to, want, want, you know, I, I'm not speaking for, for them. I'm giving you my opinions for them to hear as well as you to hear okay. and for discussion here. Yes, yes, I would like you to give me what changes it is that you, you are seeking. I want to go back and read that email. You guys decide what would you like to see and then we'll talk again. And I would prefer if we could have a, a meeting aside from a public meeting where we can discuss it. The problem is, is I, I we'd have to ask Marty if that's an option, if we could do something like an executive session. Well, we, I don't think you could probably do an executive session. You could have a meeting with one, one of you as a representative. I, I, I'm not really well, let sure me you ask you this. Session. One thing, one thing, Marty, that we have been able to do in the past, or if I understood correctly, we have an office, a designated office, it's a little office, but we have an office. And my understanding was all three of us could convene in there to discuss things as long as we left the door open 
And as long as we didn't make a decision. As long as you don't make a decision, actually, you can certainly discuss mm -hmm. the issues that you see. You can't make a decision, and you, you know, and that, that's kind of a fine line, of course. But I mean, yes, but, I understand. But, but you know, then you have to actually come and hash out your. Proposal. Well, I would kind of like to be able to. I mean, I don't want to have to repeat everything. I threaten to. But I don't want to have to say everything I said in that email in a public meeting. And I would like to really, you know, I, you know, I would like to see changes. They, and I'd like to get it on the table because I, I don't know. I feel like we've been saying this and saying this, and the changes just don't happen. When would you like to meet? Well, I want the lawyer to say we can do something well, like that yeah, first. I mean, it, 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 you can certainly have a meeting with a representative of of the board and uh, with any any vendor. I mean, actually, I thought it's really have heard me say how there's kind of a there's kind of a, a sliding scale on on what you know the application of the open door law. And I would have to say that when you're talking about essentially a vendor issue that's actually a very high level speed compared to internal for example the opposite end would be internal operation of the, of the county government would be much lower basically what i'm hearing you say is you're you as nicely as you can don't do that well don't have know, all there, three there's of things you can do i mean you can have a representative you, i think the three of you can discuss what the issues are you want to you want to do but in, having the vendor in that discussion is where as you can see that's I mean, that's why that's so heavily regulated. That's a situation that right. has the opportunity for improper actions, right? You see what I'm saying? You know, for corruption to occur. So that's why, that's where you can't do that. The three of you can talk about the issues that you want. You can't make a final decision or you can have a representative. We can make a list maybe of the yeah, issues exactly. in our office. Yes, I agree with that. But you can't, I don't think you can, you know, you can't have negotiations with a vendor you know, uh, unless it's a bid contract, and you take, for example, so Cosmo, you can have a post bid negotiation to try to get more out of that contract. You know, that's allowed. But you see what I'm saying? So it's it's so a, it's a it's a fairly meet, difficult one. You come up with a plan, and then we'll meet with one of you all. And uh, we'll, have well, I want to be the one. Um, I'm the most verbal and vocal of of the group here. I mean, I don't mean to like say, you know, I'd like for us to meet. Right. Come up with the issues. That's fine. That's fair. But I prefer to be. I want to be the one in this do, particular case to that. meet and and do that and then get in touch and I'll get you there. In the meantime, we'll try to do it as quickly as we can. But in the meantime, I would suggest that if you need money right now, you better cash in your CDs, um, because I'm sure that some of the things we come up with will be objectionable to you and some of the members of your board. And it, I mean, it took us a long time to get the, the uh, contract that we got with economic. It took an entire year to get our contract with economic development worked out. I'd like to have something worked out before I leave office, where where the new tone has been set I'm and the new so. boards are, are are you know moving forward. I'm sure you'd like to see me just be gone and then things go back to the normal or the way they have been, but I don't think that's going to happen. Not at this juncture. There's been too many things said. There's the council, I believe, supports a change. Um, I believe my fellow commissioners right. support a change. Uh, let's, we want a change. Change isn't always bad. So, I mean, it's, you know, we'll that. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to disparage the quality of the programs that are coming out of the skill. It's not about the quality of the programs that are coming out of the skill. I think your programs are good. I mean, I've heard that many, many times. It is who's going to pay for them, though, and how they're going to be funded is what the biggest topic of conversation becomes. That's one of the biggest topics. Okay. I think we're done here, unless you had anything else. Yeah, they, yes. you know, I just like kind of voice maybe from the council side a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that we have a couple of things here. And excuse me, Don, about it. I thought it would be good I, I idea just to speak it out loud. Um, first of all, I think number one that the commissioners asked the organization for something very specific, mm -hmm. and I don't think Ron did a very good job with delivering that. I, I like Ron. I, I, you know, well, I, I think I, I, so. so I, I, I agree with that. Ron did not do a very good job. And, and so I, I don't think that, according to how this was mandated, and the council will support this also. I don't think that the Economic Development Foundation delivered what you asked for. Mm -hmm. Now, aside from that. 
I know you budgeted for it also, and it's hard, it's hard to be in that situation. But I think we have a long-term issue here. And I think it's very clear that government isn't normally involved in, involved in education because they are, they have their own taxing unit. I mean, they're, they're separate, it's separated. So I was just thinking this now, I wonder if there's some way that the county could help still communicate with the school to try to close that gap. Well, I mean, one of the things I thought about is the commissioners and the schools mm -hmm. um, and the, uh, your organization sitting down, but again, that would be a public meeting if we had three commissioners. So, um, but I think there's lots, of, that is one of the options I thought about actually. And uh, there's lots of things on the table that we could could discuss, but which is why I'm saying if you need money immediately, you better use right. your CD right. and let's try to get somebody. But I guess the thing that I'm trying, point I'm trying to make is because I've communicated with several people, including yourself, and, and I know that everybody thinks that skill is a beautiful program. Mm -hmm. I think there have been times where we did say we'd like to see you do other things, how you're doing a firefighting and things like that. Personally, I've been in my soapbox because I'd like to see things that more, were more related to farming because that's our industry. But regardless of that, education comes through schools. You know, and county is involved in infrastructure and all the things that we're faced with. And COVID really came and slapped us right in the face right in the middle of all, all this too yeah, because yeah. it's even heightening our realization of what we should be involved with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it also is more of the whole thing, the good for the whole county. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit secular in that way, you know, the, the way it happens, although, you know, I've also been myself on myself, on myself on many times about adult education and adult development, you know, I and mean, there's a really big focus here. We can get work know, one in on the, on some of these meetings as well, because they're the ones that fund the adult students. So. Mm -hmm. But our literacy is still terrible. So yes. Our health is, is, you know, there's so many other, you know, things that are county, really county business, you know what I mean? And, you know, they come from education, but I, I think really the Economic Development Foundation is in a bad spot because they help build this thing up. And again, we all agree it's a beautiful program. But the school needs to step up. And I'm just going to tell you, like in my position as, as a council person, being around for a little while, some people know me, and I hear from people that aren't even in my district. But when they, Brian did bring up a good point, now that people are seeing this school project over here, and they're going, a school can't give $80,000 the skill for this important program, but and, and again, I don't want I don't want to um, discount the school either though, because you know I mean they want they want the kids to be comfortable they want to be progressive you know what I mean they, you know well and I think the curriculums are changing from the state there where they're requiring more vocational diplomas now uh, and I don't know all the details that go around that but I do believe that's, that there I is some that, so which means that it is. yes mm -hmm. so the schools are going to be required to yeah. have to do something mm -hmm. here. Graduation so, pathways with okay. the institute a couple of years ago. Yes. And the students that are, I think, sophomores this year, when they graduate, if they don't show some type of graduation pathway, those kids that, that are working for, towards college, they've got a pathway. And the other kids, now the state says, you have to show us what you're doing towards, towards uh, a pathway to employment. And that's where scale comes in. Those kids that come and, and go to our auto tech or our welding or our ARM, that's their graduation pathway. We provide those graduation pathways for those kids that are going to college. And that's one thing, that's another thing that's going to impact our students in Stark County. If we don't have skill, all of a sudden there's a bunch of those that got their graduation pathway through skill. Now they or the school has to try to figure out something else. So I think that's well, what they Mm -hmm. uh, say, yes. Where are these schools coming in at? You know, aren't you supposed to go? Aren't they supposed to be teaching these young adults to how to make a living when they go out there, or are they just they're running you through and oh, I'm putting a paycheck in my No, that's not. You're supposed they to be training them for their future. They no more auto body, no more machine shop, no mm -hmm. more wood shop. Mm -hmm. But the federal government is actually stepping on that too, mm -hmm. and you're going to see over the next couple of years some legislation that's going to force. What Kathy was talking about, because there is a real realization in this country, and we're always seeing as all oh, the USA is falling behind China for education and you know university and things like that. But now we don't have enough skilled workers to do the job. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So, well, I think that not every kid be deserves. No, I shouldn't really say deserve, but not every kid is suited for college. That uh, is correct. And many kids need to learn how to like make this. a living with their hands and not be bumps. So. Uh, 
That's what skill does. Well, it, I, and I'm good with that. But again, it all That's comes down to, it's not the, the program. It's not the program. It's who's going to pay for it. How is it going to be paid? What are the priorities here? And what, what needs to change, you know, to make everybody comfortable. So that's what I'm suggesting. Again, I'll, I'll repeat it one more time. If you need money tonight, cash in your CDs. If, if you will sit down, we'll come up with a list of what we feel need, needs to change. Um, I think they both nodded when I said I wanted to be the representative. Uh, we'll sit down, uh, but, but I would like to do it. I don't want anybody pointing their finger at me across the table saying, you don't know what you're talking about because I'm going to come unglued on them and I'm going to pop their heads <laughs> right off. I mean, I've me. had that happen hey. to me at your All meetings right. before, so you know but what I'm talking hey. about. Listen She's here. lucky I didn't deck her Kathy, right in the... It's going to be me sitting across the table. It's me and you. Oh, I right. don't, I'm not going to say that. So don't. Okay. That was my last meeting that I ever attended there, too. By the, uh, I, All no, right. I think it. we're set, and you guys will come up with some, yes. some thoughts, yeah. and you give me a call when you're ready, and, and I'll come to meet you. Thank Could you. I ask one more question, though? I, I'm interested in what you I've never you gotten said. over that either, Larry. So you know, just, you know, I'll never get over it. Is, but how do we nurture this connection, though, to try to have government help the school and not be confrontational, but get more involved with this? I mean, is, is there some way you that mean, we can uh, put a consortium together that includes the school? I mean, there's been other times where the school really could come to the table. I'm not really sure that, you know, I mean, we've got circuit breaker things that are going to be exacerbated by the shortfalls that we're going to see in 22 and beyond. I well, mean, and the school needs to, you know. I think we, it. right now, is a golden opportunity because of a couple of things. They are changing their curriculums, um, or the state's requiring them to have some of these pathways, number one. They have a brand new superintendent at OD who wants to make his school as healthy as possible, and I think he'd be willing to uh, uh do whatever he needs to do to 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 keep his school running. Everything I hear about the superintendent here at Knox has been good. He's been very participatory on things. Um, I I don't know about Judson. I mean, I just don't. You know, know she doesn't know. like me. I know she doesn't <laughs> like you. So so you're she's your your you don't know what you're talking so, about. So you know what I like to suggest for that though is I mean I I hope that the schools will see this as a glass half full approach where the county seeded this. County supported this. The Economic Development Foundation put a huge focus on it, you know. And obviously, there's so many other things that the Economic Development Foundation is chartered to do, you know. But they put such a lion's effort into it. It's time to say, you know, hey, look, look what's already been done. You know, you've already got all the seed money and the, you know, the plan's already set. It functions, you know. So it's turnkey. Buy it. I think we need to well, market it. For the I I don't disagree with any of that, and, and I'm feeling pretty excited now. Because it feels like a pretty collegial thing and not a us and them. And here's the line and let's, let's, let's all put our heads together and make this thing work. We can do that. Well, I feel much better because I was prepared that. for the <clears throat> for the big battle tonight. But I'm sure you knew I'd be prepared for the big <laughs> battle. So, um, so right. I'm glad that 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 it appears to be very again collegial. So, uh, we'll. Uh, uh, we'll 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 meet in our office sometime. Uh, uh, we don't have to post it. Uh, it's our mm -hmm. office, um, uh, but we will the leave the door open, open and um, uh, if any, and we'll talk about what we want. We'll make a list, and uh, uh, which I guess is an action in itself, but uh, we won't take any action on them. I'll bring them to you, and then we'll sit down and we'll talk about that. Okay, sounds good. All right. You're done. Unless you want to make any comments, Albert. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thanks for your has, time. Has anybody mentioned to you, Mr. Hanselman, that the county may, at some point in the future, want to use your uh, contractors or your kids that build houses to build a house on a piece of property we own? No. Well, we might be interested in another year or two. We don't have any money this year. Uh, but I'm putting that seed down there so my fellow commissioners here can, because uh, Brian is, Brian and I looked at some properties. We have three construction programs. Um, Knox, had, from, from a certain perspective, Knox and North Coast is going to go forward. Mm -hmm. Morgan Davis students go to Glen Glen High School. Um, Albert has built um, a couple of houses in the spring. 
the subdivision on 700 north of King. Turn, Fox Run, what is that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, north, 700 north, 700 east, 700 east, excuse me, going north. Okay, okay, yes, yes, yeah, I'm not good at the numbers. Well, we may, they may have some, and what, what happens for that program is. The, that would probably come from Palmer's program. Mm -hmm. Is what we do for someone to build a house and any of our programs is that sometimes we build a spec home and a couple of our programs, but Palmer has a, a list and in that program, and then a homeowner or potential homeowner writes a letter of interest to the instructor and then talk about the kind of home you want because uh, is it doable for the kids, things like that. Cause it's a teaching class, and then you get your name put on a list. <coughs> And then you're assigned a year. Most times people move up because people may not want to take the year they were assigned, or something happens with their career, they move out of town, um, things like that. So but almost all of our homeowners have moved up on the list. Would you and have a homeowner or is it the county? No, we had talked about in a, in a commissioner meeting about we have several really nice pieces of property. That uh, for one spec, reason or other that are under home. yes. Mm -hmm. Does that work, Albert? If they did a spec home, that they didn't well, go we've done spec homes. Um, Culver has it, that program group, the John Glenn and the Plymouth program. Plymouth builds a spec home every except with one exception, and John Glenn does both. They, if they have a homeowner, they'll build one for a homeowner. If not, they'll build a spec home in the public. <laughs> what well, our what programs are? Put them up on the list and what, what our programs around. are um, is that. For our operating costs, money goes back to the kids and scholarships for them to go on to oh, union apprenticeships or if they go on to school. And we charge 20% over the cost of materials that we can. So, for example, the homeowner puts the basement in, that's between the homeowner and the basement. The kids don't touch that, so we don't charge that. But if we do all the framing, get 20% over the cost of materials. Mm -hmm. If we do the flooring, the roof, the cabinet, and so on, so all those, that's what's charged. So people get pretty nice homes for a pretty good price. Are you doing the mechanicals also? Depends on the homeowner. Okay. Um, it depends on the square footage, how much time they have. The kids get exposed to it, but if the house is large, they'll bring in a club. Mm -hmm. The club will work with the students, the teacher will work with the electrical, things like that. And then sometimes the kids will do all the wiring and stuff. Good, and good, special. good. That's fantastic. It all depends on the home fantastic. and the layout and how large it is. That's great. One thing I'd like to um, also know about in uh, terms of the skill, um, when we started doing our Veterans Memorial, the local mm -hmm. unions, trade mm -hmm. unions, mm -hmm. came out strongly and gave us a lot of money uh, for our Veterans Monument here. They want to have a presence. It can Is there a possibility that we might be able to work something with the unions for some of this education? Because most of them do have training programs as well. Yeah. We could, I don't know, Albert would know better about that, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't be averse to having discussions with them. I mean, they, they, they look for training, I think, all the time, and, uh, you know, we could look into that. Okay. Imagine if it was a school program and skill with more consultants over it, you mm -hmm. know, all the, all those resources and efforts that skills do and to be put into that. Bring in the union, bring in the local industry, yeah. you know, bring in the future yeah. industry, you know, like mm -hmm. identifying, you know, uh, shortfalls and mm -hmm. opportunities. I, mean, I just wanted to pass this on. I came across this today. Toll Brothers is going to close September 4th, but they have a prospective tenant that could possibly carry on the same type of work mm -hmm. and at about the same employment level. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I don't have a lot of details. I will in a couple of weeks, maybe no more. I can give you an update then. But uh, the, the, the positive side is it may continue to operate under other ownership. And some of the things that, that were mentioned can make it a better situation for the community than what it is now. And I can't get into any of that, but we can maybe in a couple of weeks. So I want to share should that. Should we should we ask to be put on their list now, and then if it comes around, if we're not ready, we could. Do you want to do that or? Yeah, I think it may be a good idea.
Well, I mean, yeah, they'll get on the home construction oh, yeah. list. Yeah. Okay, what you I, do is the process would be someone, president or someone from the board, who can write a letter of interest to the building trade instructor. Okay. Um, I make a motion that Charlie write that letter. I didn't bring a card tonight. Yeah. All in favor? I let Larry uh, has my contact information. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work out when it comes our turn, then it just doesn't work out. But at least we get on the list and yeah. it's something that we can talk about and think about. Yeah. And, uh, one of the problems here is housing, and maybe that's something that we can help with. So, okay, thank you very much. I'll be thank in touch you. with you all. Yeah. Uh, motion to approve the vendor claims in the amount of three hundred four thousand four hundred thirty dollars and ninety one cents. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to approve the uh, payroll claim uh, in the amount of $259,406.37? Totally. Second. All in favor, aye. Uh, is there a motion to approve uh, payroll this pay payroll claim in the amount of two hundred seventy six thousand five hundred forty dollars and ten cents? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. One motion. I'll say minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from May fourth, May eighteenth, May twenty eighth, and June first? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Probably knew what he was talking about too. So. <laughs> Who's in this type? <laughs> I'm giving you 50, de 50 deliveries for Monday. Well, Jimmy's going to have you this time. When are you going to send Kathy with me doing that stuff? <laughs> I said, if you needed, uh, needed someone, I'd do it, but wait till the kids go back to school and it's cooler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. And I got a new vehicle to put the stuff in, too. So. <laughs> I took bath late today. Oh, yeah. You're kind of very help friend. Huh? You've been very help. Yeah. I count on you for Mondays. Yeah. Count on Brian Monday. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, some people want to talk to you. There's some more. They don't care. <laughs> All right, we got a vacancy on the hospital board. I got somebody. Um, the um, couple of the board members called me um, about uh, this position, knowing that it was supposed to be a Democrat. And uh, the last person that they had from the North Judson area was Dorothy Bowen. They hadn't had anybody from North Judson since then. Um, so they brought up a couple of people uh, to me. I don't know. I said, I don't, you know, I don't know how that one wouldn't be good. And, and I guess they called me because of my experience and background with the hospital. And I said, I don't want the commissioners to have to appoint somebody that is going to be educated on hospital issues. And I want them to jump, be able to jump in and understand. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized there's a retired nurse just retired that I worked with from North Judson. Her name is Roseanne uh, Bobear Shorter. Mm -hmm. uh, you know Roseanne? Mm -hmm. You know the Bobear family? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Roseanne was one of the best nurses I have ever worked with. Uh, she's worked at both Stark and Valpo. Mm -hmm. um, she uh, is from, lives in North Judson, mm -hmm. has been from that area her entire life. Mm -hmm. Uh, understands the people there and the needs and the issues that surround the hospital. So I called her and asked her if we could have lunch. We had lunch. I brought it up to her and she wanted to think about it because she had just retired and she wanted to, uh, uh, said she didn't think she'd get involved in anything for at least a year after retirement just to kind of get her bearings. Um, and I said, mentioned about the Democrat thing. I said, I checked your voting record and the last time you voted, which was a while ago, it was as a Democrat. And she called me, she said she really liked the opportunity to be on the hospital board. However, she uh, has not voted for, uh, the last primary was not, she didn't vote at all. She wants to be known as an independent. And I said, well, uh, as long as you're not a Republican, because there's four Republicans on there, two Democrats, we could put you on as an independent and be, it wouldn't be either one of those and it would not shift the balance. So uh, she's excited, she's enthusiastic. Uh, the physicians know her. 
uh, the older little one that's been there for a long time, and, and she has a lot of respect from the hospital community. So I'd like to nominate uh, Roseanne Bobert Shorter, which and uh, as an independent, which have fulfilled the remaining unexpired term of Jerry Wilson. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and then the meal deliveries. We're going great. We have spent about fifty-seven thousand dollars so far, which we're spending Oak Ridge money first, mm -hmm. um, and. We service about it's about 45 households on Mondays and 45 households on Thursdays. Um, depending, I don't, I don't know how long, but you guys are wanting to keep this program just continuously going. But Claire, who is an intern for the Northern Indiana Community Foundation, her herself and another intern, they do meal deliveries every Monday and Thursday. And we give them a very large amount within the city amount. They have about 30, almost 30, 25 to 30 of the delivery. When they go back to college, which would be the first week in August, I foresee, and if this program is still going, I foresee that we're going to have to maybe hire a part time person to continue what they're doing for Monday to Thursday. Because there's no departments that are going to be able to pick that up. Do we have the same need? <laughs> Do we have the same need that we have? If uh, we see, we're seeing less senior citizens. Like the senior citizens used to be up there about 85 percent of our requests. Now it's about 57 percent more quarantine people. And um, a little more job, job losses, or loss of job losses. Um, so a little less than your citizens and a little more important. I noticed our numbers are going up. Bernadette, did you have something? And of course, there's in November we get uh, from the West Park, my office is going to be able to do with the election. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we get to the election. Well, personally, once the kids go back to school at that time, I mean, I will have more time, but I can't do it all. And I'd be more than happy to have volunteer, but um, it's, I mean, Nina, Bernadette, or Brian, it really is a two, one person to do it, but it's, it's hard for one. I mean, you've seen the groceries that we had today. Yeah, I usually drag somebody with me. <laughs> no doubt. Mm -hmm. Get rid of there's a mad, mean dog there. I, I send them up to the door. <laughs> <laughs> then when they get rid, I just drop the stuff off the leash. <laughs> and I talked to Martin about it today about whether or not we could hire a part time person for this month. You gonna look into that? I, I, I think probably the answer would be yes. I, 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 we kind of talked about that, especially with you going into the, you uh, be going into the funds from, we haven't even spent any of the funds from the Community Foundation yet, and I believe that when we structured that, we structured it so we could we could have some money for paying people to do the work, and volunteerism only goes so far. <laughs> well, that's true. I'd probably do it a couple of times and say, man, this is really hard. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you like to talk to everybody. I do. <laughs> they like to see you come, I'm sure. <laughs> I do have a meeting with the Northern Indiana Community Foundation at 9 o'clock Wednesday morning. So I'm Brian is be there with me. It's just on online. But they just want to go over some of the stuff with the program. And you you know the delivery side of it. You know, I, I may know the entire other, other side of it. But I don't do know. I got to go? Yeah, you have to 9 o'clock my office. It'd be really helpful. I'm gonna I'm gonna be on that too. It's gonna be it'd be really helpful to have you with the experience you have actually getting out there doing it. You know, one thing I want to make sure I say uh, for the record, um, apparently one of the restaurants, and I think it was Rob uh, from uh, Hope Depot, had told some of his customers that if it wouldn't have been for the county buying meals from him, uh, you know, once a week he would not have survived uh, the shutdown. So I, you know, we produced two good things with this, and that was to help boost the local restaurants and um, uh, feed people that needed to be fed. Mm -hmm. So I, 
you have to place for it. Yes. Um, my, my name is Joanne Bailey and I'm standing here. Um, is that a volunteer basis for delivery? And is that mostly in the Knox area or is it all over? It's all over. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So if I have somebody that might be interested in doing that, do I direct them to you? Can, can you take any other liability wise? Do you have that? Volunteers or uh, employees? Are you Volunteer. talking about for a volunteer? Um, yeah. Well, we got volunteers now. I mean, uh, yeah, I got people working. Yeah, Jim Pressler, he's not employees, so yeah. I, I think you can. We may, uh, we can check the picture because they may want a release or something. Yeah, she was making deliveries for school. And oh, for school. yeah. Yeah, Carla Matthews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, okay. I can contact her and see if she might be willing to help out. Okay. Oh, you think? It's worth a shot. Yeah. That maybe you could set them up if, like, if, if they know a certain area of the county, like right. over by Sanford and stuff, give, give them that area. Yeah, we're trying to keep To make it, make it right. easier yeah. for them. We're trying to keep the route. Yeah. Yeah. In section. Well, you do that to me for you send me all over. Don't go By the way, Rachel, I just want to say that I think you did an excellent job. With, uh, she does. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was uh, not in her job description. It was something she volunteered to do, and um, and it was, you know, I mean, it was not it. You know, it took a lot, and uh, I appreciate what you did, and I think mm -hmm. I does. think we all she did, and uh, and it and when I heard that feedback on Rob's restaurant, I knew we had done the right thing, and uh, I heard a lot of I've heard a lot of larger communities get like you know six weeks after it's been running here, they were starting to go, maybe we should do that, <laughs> and you know, mm -hmm. I maybe feel kind of good. Yeah, yeah. 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 When, when it really needed to happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, he, and that that was, you know, a great collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. done in that short of time frame. Mm -hmm. So do you think I would just direct them to you then? Yes. Is that what you said? Okay. Yeah. I guess I'll call on you. Oh, we are. We approved the contract uh, with Zybolkowski uh -huh. uh, pending Marty's review, and uh, Marty says it's fine. John Kirk's waiting for it, um, and I would just need to be signed. They're still trying to squeeze a little bit more out of it. Yeah, they're still trying. Uh, I'm going to have a meeting with John Kirk and the judge and Mr. Zywalkowski at the end of the week, I believe, to see where we're at from a financial standpoint and see how much they've been able to ratchet it down and how much we would need for the seating and the technology upgrades, which really are needed. If we're gonna do. So um, that will kind of drive uh, any future discussion at the next very next meeting with the council. No, that's separate. separate mm -hmm. And they agreed to that because uh, that came up after they agreed to the scope of the project, and it was they were doing the review to try to put the, together what they needed for the plans and that when uh, it was suddenly discovered there was no fire alarms in the courthouse. So all these years, I never knew there was no fire alarms in there. So uh, we, I said, well, you have, now that we know it, we have to put them in. And uh, we weren't planning on that, so we have to pay for them separately. So uh, so they agreed to that. So I'll have more information after that meeting later this okay. week. And, uh, but I do anticipate at our very next joint meeting, we're going to have to go to the council for some more money. Sorry, I've been prepping on it. Well, that's how you. Uh, that's how I feel. <laughs> Thank you.
well, he's saying those um, off the record this has nothing to do with this public meeting, but Mr. Rippey, you, you gave a nice contribution to our Veterans Memorial. Um, did you see the email I sent? I sent you an email right away as soon as I got that. Yes, yes. Uh, if you want a, a paver, you need to give me that form this week. Um, you can give it to me later, but I cannot guarantee your brick will be in place on November 11th. Okay. So just letting you know, I wanted to follow up on that since I knew I hadn't gotten it back. Trying to figure out what to put on there with all the political junk going on. Yeah. 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 What general do you quote? Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, you got anything else for me? I can watch it. Yeah. Listen to everything. Mm -hmm. You have property. The school has a building program. The skill center needs money. How about you provide the property to Jim's build the house and have a house raffle? Let them keep some of the property. That's not a bad I idea. Mean, they work for churches and everything else. That's not a bad idea. It would help you, help them, and cover the cost. Which was That's pretty much work was working, working on that in the spring, you know, a couple of the properties that were in the other side. It kind of got shut down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. That wouldn't help the right now need that they've got, but it might help something for down the road. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of the veterans program, um, we're going to, I'm very confident that we are going to hit our $50,000 um, uh, match. I've talked to the lady from Patronicity today. She's uh, suggesting that we might want to extend the uh, amount a little bit. So I'm going to talk to the, uh, because it, it, I'm getting encouraged that we might have enough for some landscaping and some uh, uh, granite uh holders for the cannons that we had talked about that we'd x off because we didn't think we had enough money so i'll talk to the committee members and see if they want to yeah. they won't terminate the program if we meet our goal early it's still going to go to july 21st and she said some communities uh will just extend the amount of money and uh they don't match it but uh it encourages people to continue so to give it. yeah so i've been very very i'm it's been a lot of work, um, but I'm amazed at the generosity of people in Stark County and uh, their enthusiasm for this mm -hmm. particular memorial and uh, or this particular project. So, um, it, and it's on time and on budget. Um, uh, we uh, they're going to be starting the concrete work as soon as Doug finishes up some things that he's got going. So if it doesn't start this week, it'll start next week. And uh, uh, once that concrete work is done, they'll, uh, you know, depending on when those pavers come in, they can start laying the pavers. Mm -hmm. But the stone is scheduled to be here around October and it will be carved and it will come with five different pieces and we'll have a crane to drop it into place. So I'm confident that we're going to meet the November 11th deadline. We're getting the uh, things going on the third floor of the courthouse. Mm -hmm. um, Things going on. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Uh, Marty, you got anything else? Rachel? So we did have an employee health care last week. So there's 70 employees that had it. Mm -hmm. Happy by being one. <laughs> <laughs> I still have a bruise where they drew the blood, too. Yes. Um, I would like to know who do I speak to? Or if I propose to get two no jake break signs and four twenty one maybe ten each and ten one. The state. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Huh. I've been to the state, they said something about an ordinance. Well, uh, how, how many ordinances? We don't have yeah, we don't have nothing with 
maybe they want us to write one. You know. Um, I suggest she contact Rick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rick. yeah. Contact Rick. Oh, I've gone to the highway department. I've gone to Rick, and then I was directed to come to the church. That's your side of the woods. You're next to the woods. Listen, here's yeah. somebody we talked to Rick. And yeah, let me. Talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me. Start from Pentagon, uh, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I drive semi, but I don't ever use. I don't I'm use that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I'll talk with Rick, and then uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, do you, does he have any of your like your contact info or anything? Okay. And I, but I can give you the same thing I still have it on my phone. Okay. Correspondence with him. Okay. If you give Charlie your your name and telephone number, write it down for him. Yeah, and then I'll okay. so I can give it to him. He can kind of keep you in the loop with it. So. He'll probably sure. remember. We had there were several conversations. Do you have a card, Charlie? I do not. I'm sorry. <laughs> Got the deer crossing signs, at least they're not getting demolished all the time. Yeah. Now. So I did that through the state, and that's why I figured right. this would be the same premise. Right. It's not. They sent me the huh. highway, and then I went to Rick, and then that's, that's when he said to bring it up. Yeah, that should be with the state, but I'll have him uh, find out more about it, and then he'll let you know. So. Well, maybe if you, it has to come from you to say, Look into it and do it. Right, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. In that, in that form. That might be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Does anyone else have anything? Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor, right. Don't know if you to What? You guys have to sign the uh, sign in sheet for the, uh, um, you know, our public hearing. I need you to.